Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on, YouTube? It's Filthy, and we're back with another video. I've had a holiday. I'm glad to be back. Very surprised PTR is still on, but uh, yeah, happy because I've got stuff to test. Uh, today, we're going to do a Witch Doctor build. This is probably, I think, pound for pound, probably going to be the best T16 and Bounty build for like 800 Paragon. Uh, we can really pump our main stat up with this build. It's like... Uh, I think it goes up to about 34,000, uh, this is with no augments, uh, some very questionable gear, a couple of okay pieces, um, but nothing uh, mega special, so quite easy to set up, bit of a weird one because we're not actually going to take a full 6 piece set, uh, so a little bit a little bit unusual, um, I don't think I've ever made a build like this before, but before we do jump in and take a look, as always guys, thumbs up, uh, brightens my day. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's have a little look at the Witch Doctor. Um, and obviously, it looks as though the Witch Doctor power has been rejigged. It did look like they were going to be pretty powerful. Uh, I've had a watch of Wadijo's video. I've had a watch of uh, Big Daddy Den's video uh, on Jade. Thought we'd check it out for T16. And yeah, it's really fun. Blows up the screen pretty fast, pretty easy. Fairly brainless. You can mash all the buttons if you want to mash all the buttons. You can just kind of chill out if you want to just chill out. Um, it all revolves around the season theme, and this is one of the updated powers here. Uh, so you don't have to have it on the Sacred Harvester, but early in the season you're likely to go for a weapon because you're going to want that primal weapon with the you know max damage uh, roll on it is going to be pretty handy. But it could easily go on any of them. Um, one in three chance every time you use one of your upgrade powers on it that you're going to get this special effect. So whenever you get an enemy hit with Locust Swarm. Uh, they also get horns applied. Now there's a bunch of other stuff like casting piranha nado will like or piranhas will like drag the screen to you. There's like a little bugger dial um, and stuff like that. You do, you don't need to worry about that. We're not going to take uh, the the piranha because we're just basically jamming this with move speed. So the only thing we really care about is that as locust swarm emanates out from the witch doctor, it automatically casts horn for us. So with that in mind, we've got the Wormwood in the cube. So Locust Swarm continually plagues enemies around as well. The Pestilence Rune. Um, we've also got Creeping Death. Uh, so all the kind of like Haunt Locust Swarm stuff for Jade. Now we are actually taking four pieces of Jade. So we've got three on. So we've got the gloves, the shoulders, and the chest plate with the Rorg in the cube. I think it's worthwhile doing it this way. Uh, I've seen people run the full six piece of Jade. Uh, I don't think you need to do that. Uh, I just don't think that it's worth it. Um, I've seen some people run two-piece Jade. I think you may as well take the, the extra slot uh, and go for the four-piece because you get every rune on Soul Harvest. Uh, and realistically, there's only two that you care about. Uh, armor and Speed. Now, let's say you don't want to use the new Guardian set. And let's say you're using the gold wrap and you're going to go for infinite toughness uh, well then I'd say you really don't care about the four piece um, jade because you may as well just stick on the speed one and that's it you can forget the armor if you're going to rely on gold wrap you can forget the armor but I kind of like sometimes making builds without the gold wrap because it means that I can just use this set for t16 and for bounty I don't have to swap on swap off so for bounties very nice uh, and there's enough toughness in this build even without the six piece jade even without the gold wrap um because we've got like a bananas two million life pool uh, as i say absolutely boatload of intelligence when we get going uh, so it's kind of like playing with like mega paragon without mega paragon and obviously the more that you add to this you know it's only going to go one way guys it's only going to go faster it's certainly not going to go slower uh, as you augment the pieces, get better pieces, get more Paragon. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, like uh, I guess, as we go. Right, so that's Jade covered. Uh, we need the Quizzicotal. This is a Voodoo Helm. Uh, we need this because it will basically give us the kind of like double damage, basically. It halves the, the duration that the damage is dealt, so it's kind of like giving double damage. You need this one. Uh, we've also got the Haunting Gordel. Haunting Girdle even, so we get an extra Haunt whenever it goes out, so we get two instead of one, uh, which is nice, helps spread the Haunts across the screen, so once the Locust Swarm goes off, Haunt then goes off, and it goes off uh, with the extra Spirit, which is nice. The Guardian set has been changed since I've been away, this is one of the PTR updates as well as the Witch Doctor powers in general, uh, we get a doubling of our Strength, Dex, Intelligence and Vitality from items equipped. Uh, pretty nice because it means that we can get a very high intelligence figure 
uh, early doors, uh, really nice big life pool early doors. Uh, the three pieces are a bit mad. We get some damage reduction based on our vitality, so we'd get 13% melee damage reduction based on the vitality we've got on this particular spec. Uh, we'd get 19% missile damage reduction. Kind of crap, not really worth it. I mean, we'll take it because we're not using gold wrap, but again, if you were taking the gold wrap, you wouldn't really care. The two and three piece for this might get switched around. That would, would make more sense. The three piece might actually get updated to give us something better maybe more damage, uh, maybe just some flat damage reduction. But at the moment, that's kind of how it works. Uh, we've also snuck in Crimsons because if we only have to take three pieces of Jade, obviously the helm is kind of locked off for the Kiz Kotal, but then we've got the, the pants and the shoes, so we may as well go with Crimsons uh, for some extra damage and some extra toughness on the resource cost reduction. 20% cooldown, 20% resource cost reduction. You know, not bad stats uh, to have. now. Bear in mind, I've got almost zero cooldown, so I, don't, I haven't bothered rolling it on the weapon, I haven't bothered rolling it on the offhand, it's not on this ring, it's not on this ring, I don't have it on the gloves. The only roll I've got of cooldown is a 6% cooldown roll on the shoulders and the gem in the helm. So if I was not lazy and I had rolled cooldown on these slots here, that would be a pretty big power increase uh, and we would be blowing stuff up a little faster. But I kind of want to leave it crummy just to show you that it does work, uh, even with like kind of not the best stuff. So a lot, a lot more cooldown would be a lot more damage. Um, I do have one resource cost reduction roll, which is giving me a bit of toughness. So again, you know, you could pick one of those up somewhere if it just happened to land that way. Um, you know, that would be fine. Uh, Ring of Emptiness is always a kicker for any build uh, that has got Locust Swarm or Horns. So we're doing 300% extra damage. So obviously this is kind of like a key to the build. We need the power off the legendary weapon, you know, one in three chance or, or, or whatever it is, one in three chance on whichever item you're going for. At Ring of Emptiness is probably going to be pretty fiddly to find, but other than those two things, um, I think you're pretty much set, particularly with using Sacred Harvester uh, because there is no, like, uh, damage range on it. It's just you get 10 stacks of Soul Harvest, so you double all the benefits from that, uh, which I do think is pretty nice. So if you just get yourself any Sacred Harvester, that shouldn't take too long to find. Uh, and then you're basically just spending all of your uh, angelic resources until you get the property that you want on it. So if you're lucky, it'll be three goes. If you're unlucky, it might be six or seven. Uh, you just got to pray to RNGs and see what RNGs does for you. Uh, we're also taking the Shukarani's Triumph. Uh, when we are in spirit form, we stay in it until we attack three times or happen across elite. Whilst we are in spirit form, we deal up to 100% extra damage. I've got almost the lowest roll on here of 79, so again, another piece that could be considerably improved for this. Um, and basically, it'll just mean that we don't take any damage whilst we're in here. We can stand in explosions. Uh, we just have to be a little careful. If the auto haunts pop us out, or we come across the leap, we pop out. Um, and again, more cooldown rolls on the build, as well as more damage would help me out with my uh, spirit walk. But we are taking a passive to greatly reduce the cooldown. Uh, I did see Big Daddy Den ran the Ingeum. Uh, I've seen a lot of people run Ingeum. I like the Sacred Harvester because I think it's better for bounties. And as I say, I'm lazy, I don't want to swap. But if you think about it, with the Soul Harvest, Soul to Waste Rune, you're getting 5% move speed for every stack. Uh, and going from 5 stacks to 10 stacks, it's an extra 50% move speed. So we move twice as fast at 10 stacks. When we pair that with the Severance, you know, we've got 200% move speed. Um, pretty much most of the time, uh, which is very nice. And after that, you do start getting onto a bit of diminishing returns for move speed. We do have move speed items in. Uh, we could easily swap them out. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of a diminishing returns at that point. We've got a Squirts. Uh, again, this has got Dexterity on it. It's just the first one that I found in my stash. So again, Intelligence on there, cold percent damage would be better. But as always with the squirts, we do double damage when we're not taking damage ourselves. There's enough shield pylons. Uh, you've got a decent chance, I'd say, of blowing the screen up before you get there. So you can avoid a lot of damage. Plus, if you're spending a big chunk of time in spirit walk, that's going to give you more squirts uptime. So I think it's worth taking even without taking a shield. Uh, it just seems to be the best choice. Again, as you pump up this Paragon figure, if you decide to augment your Jade Witch Doctor, uh, you could swap this off for Hellfire. There's lots of nice passives for Witch Doctor, uh, so that is something you could do as well. 
damage wise on the gems we've got the trapped for the extra damage 96 on this one so fairly high uh, but I'm pretty confident this would work with a lower one particularly when my Zystone of Vengeance is only rank 34 with a 33% extra damage so get this up to like 90 get this up to 90 you'll be absolutely cooking um, and again there's a, there's a lot more damage uh, for me you can start off with the Bane of the Powerful uh, I do think the Zyze is kind of better because it will I think help uh, further on if it procs a stun um, I don't know if the Haunt automatically procs the Bane of the Trapped at range uh, if it doesn't then the uh, Zyze is helping out a bit there it's still a decent amount of extra damage when you get to like the, the 50 yard radius 33% is probably better well it's a lot better than 20 percent but with the bane of the powerful you do get a bit more damage reduction from elite so kind of a 50 50 shout with either of those two things um i imagine that they're both fine we have also got boon of the hoarder for move speed and gold because we get so many whisperer of atonements with the keys if you, you know if you're if you're doing group grs if you're sharing with people you might find you're not that bothered about empowering your rifts you don't really care about gold then it becomes a question of is it worth it for the 30% move speed. If you decide no, uh, you know you could put in the powerful here for more power. You could put in the esoteric alteration for more toughness. You could put in the gizzard to try and keep up your shield. Uh, totally up to you. Lastly, ring for move speed. So a 60% uh, move speed buff when we fear an enemy. We do have horrify. We're going to try and click this fairly often. Um, just you know whenever it goes off which is kind of handy uh, and I think the horns also procs uh, occasionally this uh, you know if you're clicking you get the, the on hit effect as well uh, I think from that so you do get a decent amount of move speed for this if you want more damage stone of Jordan would work well here you can do convention of elements it'll be a little bit spiky uh, so I would prefer stone of Jordan just match it as always with bracer uh, and your amulet and you should be good to go Right, I think that covers the gear. If you do, you know, there is an argument at some point all guilds becomes better um, because the base effect of the guardians only really works on the stuff you've got on. So, you know, if you've got all ancient pieces, if they get orged, you'll be pumping this main stat figure up very high. At some point, yeah, all guilds will be better. Uh, but for T16, considering you can blow it up with 800 Paragon and this kind of not so great gear. Um, you're probably not going to really worry about it too much. And as always, you know me, I like to play with the new toys that Blizzard gives us. Uh, Ring of Emptiness, you need the roll as close to 300% as you can. Uh, and other than that, as I said, I don't think we've got terribly much in terms of great gear. You can get haunt damage on your chest. You can get haunt damage on your shoulders. Shoulders are a bit of a pain with Jade because I think they automatically drop with all res, which is rubbish. We don't want all res at all. So getting the... the you know, a bit of cooldown, a bit of haunt damage. I mean, not the easiest thing. Uh, right, I think that is all of the gear. Let's have a quick look see at the skills. Horrify, Frightening Aspect, 50% extra armor when we pop it. Uh, does make us tough because if you think about it, the Guardian set is giving us a lot. Um, so any kind of extra armor we can get from Soul Harvest, any armor from Horrify, all do seem to be helpful. Uh, haunt resentful spirits this again allows um, extra haunts which is nice we've got the zombie dogs with the lifelink the only reason we've got this 10% damage reduction it's a little bit neither here nor there but we may as well take it uh, and we do have the fierce loyalty for the 15% move speed uh, when we're not in combat uh, or 15% when we're in combat 30% when we're not in combat so you know very swappable you could take this off if you wanted and try something else I can't really think what. Maybe you'd go for the piranhas. Um, but I've, I've got the dogs on. Just the way we roll. Soul Harvest, we get all these runes. As I say, the only ones that really matter are these two. Uh, so they're the beneficial ones. Spirit Walk, extra moves be definitely the best. We obviously don't want any of the other stuff. Don't care about mana. Don't care about the duration. Because it's you know kind of almost infinite with the offhand. With the way that works. And then Locust Swarm, Pestilence uh, for, the, for the jump chance. Creeping Death we've covered. Grave Injustice I like because when we basically kill stuff um, within 20 yards, it must be said, we do get cooldown reduction. Uh, I think that's a nice way of handling the Spirit Walk reset. Uh, if you're going in germ, this becomes a lot less useful, I think. So you could swap it for something else. 
versus loyalty we've done and then gruesome feast again another way of pumping our intelligence you know soul harvest increases us uh, by like 30 percent um you know <laughs> intelligence which is crazy then another 50 percent here um it's yeah we get we get some pretty crazy intelligence figures uh even at 800 power it's quite funny it amuses me it probably shouldn't um extra passives if you go hellfire uh pierce the veil i was using you don't really spend much mana so you don't care about um the increased mana costs um so you could do a bit of extra damage i think there's a bit of a funky interaction with crimsons on that one though so you know maybe not the best shout uh jungle force and gdp rolled on a hellfire a little bit of extra damage reduction would be okay cheat death we're going to use the followers one but you know it might be handy for you uh, swampland attunement again would give you a bit more toughness uh, i'm just trying to think if there's anything else for damage confidence ritual again within the 20 yards more damage but again a lot of stuff is kind of getting melted at range so you know you could go for it not the worst thing in the world if you got yourself a nice double crit hellfire with it um but i mean it, let's be honest who can be bothered farming hellfires right let's uh give this a go so you can do your dogs early pray for a good map and then when you get in you pop your little spirit walk mash a bunch of buttons to get your first few haunts out and then this is it now we just need to make sure we get there stacks up to 10 and then if you see uh We've got 25k in there, 27 now. So we can stack this up five times. So we're at two stacks now for the gruesome feast. We're at five now. 35k main stat. Um, pretty funny. And, you know, for 800 Paragon, uh, this is just an absolute breeze. You know, decent coverage of, you know, the map. You can kind of, like, run over here. The haunts will just be slowly killing stuff. I'll blow some stuff up. And you, know, you, you pour some augments on this, some paragon, uh, you will be absolutely flying like anything. And if you want to kill something faster, just mash the buttons. Uh, is my favourite strategy. Um, but, you know, it's good because it'll damage a lot of stuff that uh, necessarily, you know, it's just like the full screen, isn't it? It's getting a little bit laggy, but we're just running around. We're not, we don't even really have to aim. It just kind of does it for us. It's a bit like playing with Conduit the whole time, to be honest. So, you know, is this a reason enough to do a Witch Doctor? Um, maybe. I, I think there's like a probably kick-ass GR90 setup. You know, if, you've, if you org this up, and let's say you're just trying to farm Forgotten Souls, or, pro, or you know, random primals for intelligent, intelligence class, uh, I think this could be a pretty good shout. Uh, and obviously, you know, Nice second map, but I mean, just look at that. It's just like so fast. Uh, and 800 Paragon was, you know, not particularly great stuff. Uh, and then if you want to go do bounties, that's pretty easy too. So I think we'll, we'll jump in and we'll have a little look at a bounty. Um, I mean, you know, your damage figures, when you get yourself fully, fully juiced up with your, with your gruesome feast, uh, with all your witch doctor buffs, uh, it is, it is pretty bloody nutty, uh, to be fair. All right, let's leave this and we'll start another one. And we'll do an 81 because that is a kind of about a four player bounty. It's not like 100% accurate, but it's, it's good enough. Bosses really do do melt with this. Um, and the good thing about sending it up as well, actually, thinking about it, is, is the um, you only really need the two-piece jade and the, the power from the uh, season theme. And once you've got those two things, you are absolutely flying so witch doctor's fast to level you know you get you get gazing demise pretty high chance of getting that mask of bonus leveling is is nice with the witch doctor uh you could start rolling just jade pieces like pants and something else uh, and then hope you get lucky with the with the drops for the angelic dust stuff and then <laughs> if you get lucky uh you could you could end up getting two piece jade with the automatic haunt application and you could really be flying you know <sighs> it's an option it's something to consider uh, is this enough to be playing witch doctor uh, i still think a lot of people will probably flock to monk because wave of light looks powerful albeit a little bit clunky and not the uh, not the best 
I shouldn't have taken that shield pile on, should I? This is this is going to make it look. Uh, well, I mean, hopefully you'll, you've seen we've got such a big life pool that we uh, we're not too worried about toughness. And it does get better as we go. But yeah, I still think a lot of people will, will flock over to the Monk. They'll flock over to the DH. Uh, just because I think they're going to be a bit more powerful. Like This is fast. Like If you if you just want to go as fast as possible, uh, you know, Jade could well be one of the best builds. Uh, you know, there's, I mean, there's not really much you need to manage. This is nice and brainless. You just, you know, you sit back, you watch, uh, you watch the Netflix, whatever, podcasts, and uh, it just kind of does it for you. We won't take that power pile on, because again, uh, we don't really want to be giving the misleading damage, because you won't find a power pile on when you're doing your bounties. But you know, pretty pretty quick, the, the infinite spirit walk uh, is great for bounties, because a lot of the time you, you can get these like long stretches where you just you don't see anything you don't see any mobs don't see any monsters so even the cruddiest bounties with the uh, witch doctor with the new offhand uh, does go pretty fast uh, as I say 90 I think there's there's bound to be something that'll be like a, a, an average of two minute 90s um, you know it's just got such tremendous coverage with the with the automatic like Pestilence, uh, haunts, it's just fantastic. So when you get it fully juiced, you know, perfect in all the slots, all the um all the augments done the stuff. Wasn't this guy dying? There we go. A little bit slow on that. Um but again, you know, as you add to it, it's just gonna get better and better, isn't it? Um so I guess if that was a T16 bounty, we would have died. So you know, it is a consideration to maybe for the bounties, take off the first loyalty uh, and go for the spirit vessel. Um, you know, maybe gruesome feast. Maybe that's a little harder to keep up in bounties. But by the time you start getting to 1200 Paragon uh, with you know fully ancient gear, uh, this figure here, your intelligence is going to go whoosh and shoot up. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a build that. You know, if if we played up to like eleven hundred Paragon, we'd be absolutely shredding um, everything with with you know very few worries at all. Right, that is the first video back. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to try a couple of other new things. I've tried the Wave of Light. It's powerful. It's just a bit clunky. Um, so I'm going to see what I can do with that. Uh, but I will be back with some more videos just as soon as I can. Really excited for this next season. I think it's going to be a really good one. Uh, yeah, take it easy, guys. Peace.